If what you say has harm, regardless of whether it is true, is it right for you to do it? Peanuts are a food, but yet they kill people. The point being is, are you so certain of what you've said that it isn't inflammatory? Are you so certain of what you said that you couldn't be wrong? That there couldn't be another opinion or another perspective of what you said? The fact that you're so unwilling to accept that someone may perceive what you said in a different light, you can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. You talk about the truth. You think you say the truth, but you can't accept the fact that perhaps, perhaps there's another perspective. You can't know enough to know you are absolutely correct. Are they attacking you unfairly? I don't think so. Are they attacking you with bias? Are they attacking you with a specific reason? Yes. They are afraid of what you have said, and they are afraid of what you will say. They want to take away your power. Yes, that is true. But we all do that. You do that. Whenever you attack any religion, you are trying to take away their power. The reaction that they have to you is the same. They are trying to take away your power. If you look at it from an emotional level, not from an ideological or ideas level, then you will understand what's going on. And I think you do understand, but you don't think they have the right to do that. Maybe not, but reacting to them in a pompous ass way will get you a pompous ass response. You need to understand. You don't know everything. And some of the things that you said, having read everything you've written, at least published, I know you're a little bit of an ass. And if you can't accept that fact, if you can accept, yes, me, Sam Harris, I am an ass. If you can't say that to yourself, and say, yeah, okay, I go over the top sometimes, using colorful me metaphors because I love the language. You don't need to say it in the way you say it. You choose to say it that way for effect. When you create effect, when you create an ambiance and a reason for people to listen, a reason for people to want to listen, you take a risk. And that's okay. That's why we like Sam Harris. Give it up, in other words. Be nice to people. You can say to Glenn, Hey, Glenn, I was on an off day. I was feeling bad. You know, I, I don't like the way you, that, that particular piece characterized my work. I, I think it's unfair. That's okay. But no, you come out and accuse him of pr transmitting garbage. What the hell is that? That is wrong, man. Get with the program. You gotta be civil. Especially in email. You don't accuse someone of being a pompous ass when you yourself are being the pompous ass. But I will tell you, I'm a little bit pissed off at you. It has nothing to do with about being right or wrong. It has to do with civil discourse. And that is something, apparently, you are incapable of doing. Your actions may have negative consequences. And people have a right to distance themselves from your coloration of the situation. How dangerous is Islam? I tend to agree with you. But I'm not about to defend a pompous ass. So get off your fucking high horse and start doing the right thing. Be civil. If you can't see Glenn's position, if you can't understand the criticism that's being leveled against you, then you're missing the point of dialogue. If you can't have civil dialogue with people that tend to agree with you, how do you expect to have civil dialogue with people that absolutely don't agree with you and have nothing but harm in their hearts for you? Glenn was more than willing to have a dialogue with you, more than willing to understand your position, but yet you don't use it to help him understand. You use it to criticize him. You use it as an opportunity to pummel someone. Whether you agree or disagree with his position, and I tend to agree that it is a fair characterization of your work, and I don't come from reading one book. I come from reading all your books that I know about. Given that fact, I think I can make a fair assessment and say, yes, in fact, that is a fair assessment. You don't like being called an Islamophobe? I'm sorry. It's a fair characterization. And I agree with Glenn. It's a fair characterization. You are afraid of that community. You are afraid of what that community can do. You are afraid what could happen if they were to come to power. And to tell you the truth, I am too. I'm not real thrilled about Shia law, nor do I think anyone should be, especially the Muslims. But how is your not willing to allow them 
to characterize you as an Islamophobe a bad thing. I would wear that sweater. I would deal with it. That is why you need to apologize. Yeah, I am an Islamophobe. Yeah, I am an atheist. Yeah, these are the things that I believe. And these are the reasons I believe them. And maybe I'm wrong. Except that you are a bit of an Islamophobe. Are you a racist in the sense that you subrogate? Yes. To some extent, we are all racists. And that's okay, too. But are you unreasonable? Can you be reasoned with? No. You can be reasoned with. At least I think you can be reasoned with. At least I, you say you want to be reasonable. You're picking apart an argument that has no need to be picked apart. You need to allow for the civil discourse to occur without you. You can say to Glenn, hey, I was hurt by that. Can you explain why you did it? Do you understand? Is there any way of getting through to you to understand the importance of being civil in these matters, especially because you have a social following, especially because you have an obligation to more than just yourself? And I understand you want to defend your position, but that's definitely not the way to do it. And if that's the way you behave in private, then we all need to be concerned about Sam Harris. What is his real reason for owning guns? Everything comes into question when you act irrationally, when you act emotionally. And then you enlist an army on the internet to fight your position for you. I don't think that's correct. You need to apologize.